also both good test one of India's leading contemporary artists. His works have been exhibited in the most prestigious art fairs and museums across the globe, including the Centre Pompidou and the Victoria and Albert Museum. Currently, Sabot is showcasing his new installation at the iconic Le Bon Marché in Paris, which is the first ever departmental store in the world. Hi Sabot, thank you so much for being here and talking with us today. I know you're all the way in Paris and you have a crazy busy schedule. So thank you so much once again for joining us. No, thank you for talking to me. And uh, please, I have let's... so many, so many questions for you. Me, but it's no questions there. Up till when I knew I'm doing this podcast with you, I, I, I had to, I had difficulty choosing which one I wanted to ask you. Quite honestly, mm-hmm. so I'm going to get started first. I want to start. Ki apka journey aaj tak kaisa raha? I know you've spoken about your um. Uh, about art school in patna and how the library used to be locked when you would want to access it so mm-hmm. can you tell us more anecdotes about you know your school life and your learning journey back then bahut lamba ho jayega wo do teen which strike you right now the most important memories that you have um uh, look uh, i didn't know ki i will become an artist first thing and uh, i have a uh, i'm youngest sibling in my brother and sister i have a three elder sister and two elder brother and uh, i was youngest son my father passed away at a very young age yeah. so m- my brother was like a guardian my elder brother i have a time maybe i was sneak out and uh, and since then i found my own journey and uh, and how and it's just how it's a long 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 story but yes um i think my mother used to take me to watch theater when i was a child and that impacted me i want to be different my father was in a, a railway my two brother in the railway my brother in law in the railway so basically i was a railway boy and coming out from there is not been easy but same time it was very very uh, um, quite experience and uh, i will say i am yeah so i did theater in the beginning of my career after theater i was become went to art school I'm from art school. Here I am. Oh, <laughs> art school! Me, what experience? Like, can you share a few experiences that you had, which have impacted your art today, probably? Jo influence kiya. Theater, 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 theater is More huge theater. influence. Because I did not realize that time. I did theater five years. Okay. But we was like uh, we used to make our theater posters. Okay. We used to sell ticket. We used to. Uh, acting, so we used to do everything: design, a stage, makeup, everything. So we was only like a twelve, twelve uh, uh, member. We working together, and it was like very a small theater group. And you know, village theater, a small theater. It's not I'm talking about. I'm talk Ipta, or I'm not talking about the um, uh, Sri Ram theater. Not that kind of theater. And we wanted to be like that, but whatever sources we had. whatever we can gather together and we wanted to be contemporary but we did it with our strength how much we can do and uh, that that helped me i did not realize that then but now when i make art i can see how much i am influenced from my theater Do you mean in terms of scale? It helped you maybe with because all your installations it's have the, uh, not terms of a, a scale only. Uh, uh, yes, that uh, that part is definitely terms of a scale, but also any work of art is uh, for me is like a, almost like a performing. <laughs> yeah, even a small one. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, and I uh, I like to. Uh, put my artwork seems like ki my artwork is acting itself hmm interesting i am there 
and any th- like any theater or any experience from that time that you would like to share which you know you all created something uh any incident that happened at uh, that time i was time? making i was making theater poster no okay. and uh, in a small town we didn't have a to uh, because nobody allow you at home to make a poster or bring 12 people and we all we was gathered together and making the poster where we should make poster we have no space right and uh, we not like we need a, a floor to make a poster mm. right uh, uh, and so we used to go darga uh, you know oh. uh, and, and uh, in darga there is a lots of platform uh, there's lots of, of space you know? yeah and, yeah and um, and we used to make a poster on darga on the floor in the darga because there's no space at home for everyone yeah yeah uh, yeah yeah And you all used to hand make each poster, like replicate each poster. कि फिर वो प्रिंट करवा देते थे. No, no, no. We didn't have money to print the poster. We used to, uh, 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 we used to make it a, a very large poster. So okay. making the large poster, we used to have a like we almost like making collage. So uh, uh-huh. a big large paper, but we will multiply ten times. Okay. And one by one, we paint to become a big poster, and uh, we. had a railway station like a, a called danapur is a railway uh-huh. division and we used to uh, uh, pr- uh, bring the poster over there and uh-huh. put a platform we laga dete the udhar ki this bilkul to get the danapur and return is a top of that we used to make our poster there and in night time we used to go there at midnight to uh, put the poster and we didn't have a how to how to reach there no in midnight so we used to go that uh, face the ladder from the electrician guy no who who uh-huh. climb on the pole uh, and we used to wake him up and bhaiya mujhe aap apna ladder do <laughs> or we used to take the ladder three four people are standing on uh, holding the ladder three four people looking the distance kare ye teedha hai isko seedha karo no right <laughs> right <laughs> or we used to we used to yeah and we used to pay, uh, paste the poster on the wall so we had a lots of excitement lots of energy lots of um, going on and in between i was studying in uh, um, university i was not even art school so i was okay. doing uh, uh, principal in the psychology and history oh. uh, uh, yeah so i was in uh, uh, bn college uh, in patna university i was studying not in art school so while i was doing theater so someone asked me you make such a good poster why not go art school right and that's how i went to art school wow <laughs> so did not get admission i did not get at ad- first apply for art school i did not get admission please tell us which school did you apply to which reject <laughs> in patna art school uh, they rejected me first time then second time i was so lazy doing theater i did not go third okay. time i applied and um, i got the art school yeah so called art school because there is a, only three teacher including principal okay. and there was no art history classes in five years course is happen in seven and a half eight years and uh, no not a single art history classes uh, we happen so uh, no library nothing so so it's been like almost like a self talk artist but one good thing was being in art school so called art school you have a space you have a studio to work correct and most of the thing we learn from our senior uh, who is a, a two year senior than our mm. school and we ca- we see them oh this this person is doing watercolor we go wow what a fine watercolor you do and how you do it can you teach me a student right. a senior mm. senior student and he said yes let's go 5 o'clock morning so every day 5 o'clock morning we used to soak up watercolor paper stick on the board it will morning it will dry and we get a 5 o'clock morning and we used to go to the landscape site and we used to do direct landscape watercolor and by 8 o'clock we back <laughs> doing wow. after watercolor and that's how we learn to do watercolor and the drawing wow. and the drawing when we used to learn to but basic thing in college was academic teacher is to tell us drawing is most important thing and mm. so we used to we used to go live drawing and live drawing we used to go railway station so because at midnight in railway mm. station 
midnight. So midnight railway station, most of the people is sleeping. Can mm. Yeah. Mm. And uh, so you, you can draw them while they're still. So that kind of a great experience and uh, lots of learning from a student. From a student. That, that's incredible. You learn from your peers. Means not so much from your... It wasn't a guru... Uh, no, good no. student relationship it is more a community learning community and that's it how is. yeah mm -hmm. and I staying in the hostels helped me to meet the more student who is practicing every day and yeah we learn from them learn so from that, each other yeah yeah learn from each other yeah the first time I went to art school I never thought I will be going to uh, be fine artist because I was struggling for bread and butter uh, 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 I was not getting any support to fee, nothing. So it was not an easy time for me. And uh, so I have to work very hard. So I thought okay, I will do applied art. Mm -hmm. And in applied art, I will do design and then I can make some money. And I wanted to get a degree in applied art. But uh, one year being in the, when I left my in Patna University, Patna Art College, also in Patna University, but when I left the uh, uh, education of uh, principal Indian history uh, and because I thought what is not working for me and I came to the art school and uh, two years I was doing applied art and uh, one day I saw my next roommate, senior student doing painting. And I go, wow, this man is doing great painting. I love this and how he can do that. I want to do that. And that's how I learn to, okay, I want to learn painting. And mm -hmm. like I was saying, okay, how I learn watercolor and painting. So it was a great inspiration, great motivation. And uh, one thing while we were just studying, everybody asked, you know what? You can't make art because we have no money, no money for the canvas, no money for the colors. But there were no excuse. We used mm -hmm. to find. We used to find, we used to do other kind of work, design the stage, make the wedding. Somebody said, okay, can you design the mandap? I'm like, yeah, ah. mandap, give me some money. Somebody yeah. book jacket, whatever job we used to get. Job. Do it, we used to do it, do it, do it. And that time, while I was in third year, the Bennett Coleman Times of India came to Patna. Navarat Times and Times of India. Okay. And I thought there must be they need a graphic artist. I must join that. Mm -hmm. So I joined Novara Times. For one year, I did the job as a, uh, as a graphic artist. Once, only once they asked me to permanent job, that scared me and I left. And uh, so many stories, so many stories, it, it, endless story. Yeah. You had quite, quite an uh, exciting life. So you said, I don't want to do a permanent job. That's not for me. I, I need to do my own thing somewhere. Yes. And he was shocked. He did not let, let me go. He said to me, uh, uh, unless you give someone, I will not let you go. So Obviously, I, he I, recognized the talent back. <laughs> I, I, was, I was staying with the four colleagues in my roommate mm -hmm. and I asked one of the colleagues who need a job. And one of my colleagues said, yes, I need. Okay, okay let's do this. And... Uh, my friend is still in the newspaper in Delhi. I'm not going to. Yeah. <laughs> he's still working for Ben Coleman from back then. He's working in the very uh, uh, famous newspaper in Delhi for since then. Yes. So that <laughs> could have been your life. That could have. Yeah, been that you. could have been my life too. Yeah. <laughs> that could have been. Oh wow! Yeah. The one decision made all the change at that point of time. Wow. I knew, I knew, I don't want to do, I knew somehow, somehow, something guided me. Yeah, I knew, you know, uh, 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 this is not, <laughs> I want, I want something else. Yeah. So, yeah. And let's now, I mean, talk about Sangam, which we're here to talk about, your incredible installation at Le Bon Marche. How does it feel to be exhibiting there? Uh, different. Absurdly different. It's a not a white cube. It's a not a museum. It's a store. Right. But a store has a history. They all the time exhibiting, and there is some very, very 
uh, uh, famous and good artists worked before. So they have a history to exhibiting art in the store. So like Ai Weiwei, uh, uh, Leonardo Lirage, Tadawando, Tata Tata the architect. So many, many great people exhibited before previous time, me. So first that intrigued me, why not? When Ai Weiwei, Tadawando kind of person can do it, I can do it too. Uh, I was nervous for sure because it's not easy to make an artwork for the store and what I will make, so much thing going on in your head. So it's been not, not been easy, but outcome was good. Outcome has been incredible. I think everyone has seen that we all saw the launch and we saw your escalators, everyone going up and down the escalators. Yeah. I think that was brilliant. But what was... Uh, tell us more about the exhibition. What was your inspiration? What was the thought? I know you, you know, there's there's been a lot written about it, but I'd love to hear from you. Ki, where will, where did Sangam start for you? When they asked me for the title, uh, we're working for one year now in this project. Actually, uh, uh, they came four years ago. Okay. To work with me, uh, and uh, they that time, and then pandemic started. And then everything Correct. was gone uh, um, on the loop. And then again, the last uh, uh, year, uh, they uh, year ago they came and they said, "Let's do it." This project, we 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 okay, okay, let's do it. But they were very very professional people. They hmm. they had everything very precisely. They have a team for the catalog. They have a team for the photography. They have a team for the production. They have a budget for this. They have do so everything precisely, yeah. very professionally done. And they asked me the title actually a year ago about no. So uh, while I was talking like you, came out from my mouth, Sangam. <laughs> uh. <laughs> no? And then I thought, no, I'm not going to give Sangam. But slowly, slowly, I build up my idea and yeah, Sangam, title is Sangam. So it's been more than uh, uh, seven, eight months when we decided the title. Huh. And uh, yeah, and we stick to that. Only reason I thought about the Sangam because uh, in Indian contest, Sangam is like three rivers, Ganga, Jamuna, Sarsati, when they meet together and yeah. it's a holy ground. It's a holy ground. And we always pray the nature in the river uh, and when we have a kind of pot in our hand we call arag in hindi mm. uh, arag karte hai, you know right. arag, it's like uh, worshiping and praying with the you do with the water or milk but you have a pots in your hand mm. so the form of the pots and flowing water that is my sculpture Got it. What could be better than Sangam because it's coming from there. And that's, that's, awesome. how, that's how I choose the title Sangam. And also, we know that Sangam in many multiple different contexts too. Right. Because when in this store, the people were not only coming from mm -hmm. France or Paris, people coming from around the world. And when the people coming from around the world, they almost like a Sangam, they interconnecting, their vibe is there, no? Like a subtle mm. vibe, you connect the media and the space and the, your presence is there. So I, I'm talking about that Sangam in, in a store and that's how title begins Sangam and we stick to that. You know, I've always wanted to ask you, you use so many utensils in your installation. Apka team, how do you all source so many utensils? What is the process? I've always wanted to know. In the beginning, when I started the stainless steel utensils, Hanji. again, my childhood memory strike, right? Correct. I love cooking. Cooking is my hobby. And uh, one day in my kitchen, I, I said it many times too, again, I'm repeating you. One day in my kitchen, I was, went in the afternoon. And my home was my studio in Mayur Bihar, in Sayoga yoga mm -hmm. apartment. And uh, my home was my studio. So we used to paint, we used to sleep, and that was our space. And we have a family. And uh, 
one afternoon I was in kitchen, I can see the light is flowing. Sunlight is coming through window in going in the kitchen and traveling, light is traveling. I go, wow, I felt like a, a tunsil is talking to me. And same time, I take the, all the tunsil from the kitchen and put in the my sitting room. That was right. nice. Yeah. This I read about, but what I wanted to know ki itne, how do you source aapke team? How do they get so many bartans? Are they recycled, usually reused, or are they new? A lot of them do we order new utensils with each installation? That's what I wanted to understand. Yeah. So, so in the beginning, I used to go when I used to Sadr uh, Bazaar market, where you get uh, lots of in. Um, so I used to buy from there, source my utensils. But later, I start using the used distance, like a uh, very old one. And I find it more powerful somehow now. And uh, when they, when I go to, you know, a scrapyard, mm. the people, and the person yes, collected those, they're going to melt it. And mm. then melting, they're going to make aluminum bricks out of it. Okay. So, so they're not poor returns, they're going to rebirth. So recarnation is going to happen. So right. I collect before they melt, and I do recarnation in my artwork. So I collect from the scrapyard. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's not easy to collecting so many tonsils. Exactly, yeah. exactly. That's why my sister, yeah, let me ask you, how, what is the process? And, and not yeah. only that, you don't get in one point that much tonsil. So you exactly. start to go sometime 20 kg, sometime 50 kg, sometime 100 <laughs> kg. So over the year, I, uh, I collect. collect. Yeah, it took me. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And this time, I believe you view some French utensils, French objects as well in the installation in Sangam. Uh, not in the inside uh, work. Okay. I okay. everything has taken from India, but outdoor in the window, some of them, very few of them. Yes, I did, did use the. Uh, uh, but you know, utensil is utensil. A spoon is not going to be changed. Is to a spoon in America, a spoon in Paris, a spoon in Egypt, a spoon, a spoon in India is going to. Be <laughs> Right? Right. It's going to be different. So symbolic of the utensil, it never changed. It remains the same. No matter no. if you're collecting from. And that's the reason from people around the world, when they see there something they can connect with first, it's utensils. And they know, oh, my pants, pot, spoon, I know this. So that's bring them first to towards the artwork. And then the artwork is speak itself. I mean, that's why you say anyone can relate to my art. I think that's the yeah, that's yeah. where that comes from. You always say anybody can relate to my art. You don't need to have studied art to understand my my installation. You know, which also takes me to any experiences in doing this beautiful show that you would like to share with everyone listening and especially working in Paris this time around. Uh, I was, they given me a studio outside of Paris. Okay. So I had to take a train from okay. Paris and to a place called Joey, 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 something like that, Joey. Okay. And we used to, and there was the foundry uh, whom I was working with, and they were, they had a technician, and they had a lots of assistant to help me too. Okay, amazing. And so my studio also came. My studio assistant Team. came with me, and we worked together, and their assistant together. So they given me full facility to work. Lovely. So, uh, 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 we went by a few, few, few months before we were there and I staying there and every day I used to go to take a train to go to a studio and work there. And that's why it was a very great energy. And I was sourcing the material in France itself. So I used to go to the antique, uh, uh, um, you know, flea market and all those kind of places all the time to see material, what I can collect, what I can do. And uh, that's how something very outcome come out very good for me. It's a challenge. I was nervous. What I'm going to do? What I'm going to make? It's not easy. But yes, when I start collecting the material, when I bring them in the studio and when I start working, it's just like, I don't know, it's automatically coming out. I want to do this, I want to do this, I want to do this. Yes. It just flows once you start working, once you have your raw inspiration. In so there was a you. connection. There was a connection. This connection, first connection, 
when I was buying the material, there was in flea market, there's a thousands of things, right? But what I'm choosing, why I'm choosing, something itself connect, right? So there was a first connection. There was first dialogue between me and my material start. And once I bring them, it's automatically things start happening. Incredible. And, you know, I wanted to also ask you, what are your thoughts on, you know, digital art, NFTs? It's become such a prominent conversation in the art world. I would love to hear what you thought about it. And would you consider including digital art in your work later? Have you, you know, pondered about that? You would incorporate you know, that maybe one day. No, I got you. So I'm watching NFT very closely. It's not like that. Understanding. the. Painting, visual art have a history for even a human could not speak any language. And thus prove our cave painting. The cave painting was the human first start talking with the images when we could not even speak. So visual had a huge power to speak. And since Renosha time, 600 years ago, the painting has been very, very popular until now. Painting never died. Yes, so many things come and go. You know what? Today we live in digital media and so much we are. And I'm not saying there are many young artists who expert in understanding this material. They expert to know how to do things. And I wish them to do. I have no problem. And they be, they be, they may be really very, very good on that. I appreciate that. Why not? If I if I will know technology so well, uh, I would like to experiment. So I have no problem, young people or any other person doing what they expect. I know what is my strength, right. and I don't want to go beyond my strength. I will be weak if I even make something in that perspective. So for an artist, one lifetime is maybe less. You have to be born <laughs> wise to do other things. To explore everything, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And NFT, I'm not sure still. Because digital art is fine. NFT is something in pendulum. Um, I don't understand still, very honestly, I tell you. I still I don't understand NFT. And I don't want to go there what thing I don't understand. And uh, so I want to keep it very simple. And on that note, both I'm going to ask you my short rapid fire. You can answer in one word or one line. Up to you. Mm -hmm. Very short one. If you're ready, I will start with my question. Um, one word to describe Paris. Evening in Paris. <laughs> Next one, if not utensils, then what? Food. Gold or silver? Natural. Theatre, filmmaking or art? Art. What's the last art show you went for besides your own? Michelle and Monet show, yeah. Okay. John, John Michelle and Monet show, yeah. Got it. The most unusual object you've used in one of your installations, other than the utensil, other than most unusual. Hologram. Hologram. Okay. And what's the last film you watched? Empire of Light. Okay, got it. So with that, yeah, ends, yeah, um, we went to we went to cinema to watch uh, uh, okay. Empire of Light. Yes, that that was a great movie. Yeah. That that was the last one you saw. Lovely. So with that, suppose we end this rapid fire and this podcast as well. Thank you so much for being here. It was an honor for me to ask you these questions and to ask you about your life and you know this wonderful installation you've done at uh, done in Paris this year. Thank and you. really, as usual, putting India on the map, putting Indian art on the map for us globally. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for talking to me, Isha. Thank you.